Hi, my name is Richard Dix, and this is How Did That Happen? A podcast where I look at everyday things or events and try to figure out how they came to be. Every week I will research one topic, and by the end of the episode, I hope to truly have the answer to the question, How Did That Happen? Hello, and welcome to another episode of How Did That Happen? This week, we are discussing cotton candy, and I find out that it has gone by many other names over the years. Come along for the ride this week as I ask, Cotton Candy, how did that happen? All right, um, gonna do a little intro here before we get to the actual, uh, the actual episode. Um, for what it's worth, I will say that I, I did throw up again last week, um, but it had nothing to do with food poisoning, and I have no idea, no idea why it happened. I literally um, I sneezed three times, and then I threw up after that, and it was just water, but so and I didn't. This is now. This is now Monday when I'm doing this because I'm getting to this. Um, getting to this episode a little late this week, but did not did not throw up yet. You know, a lot this past Sunday, so like yesterday. I'm I'm actually happy to say that, and it's pretty sad in your life when those are the those are the positives that you're counting. But um, yeah, I just uh, figured I would let you guys know because everyone's tuning in to hear about how often how often I'm doing that. But um, yeah. Just uh, thank you guys for, for tuning back in, and we're going to get to the, um, the cotton candy right now. 70%, 70 air, air, pure sugar, sugar. No, no cholesterol, cholesterol. no fat, fat. no sodium, no sodium. Less, less sugar, sugar than a can, a can of, soda. of soda. What are we talking about? That's cotton candy. And like I said, it's gone, gone by many other names throughout the years. Uh, one of them we'll start off with was called um, Posh, Poshmac. Poshmac. I definitely got that wrong. And this was one of the first iterations of uh, cotton candy, or what what will become cotton candy. And it was it was found in Iran um, at least since the uh, at least since the early 1400s. And basically, it's it looks a lot. If you if you Google it, and I'll definitely put a picture on the on the Twitter account. It looks a lot like what cotton candy is now. I just guess they they were doing it by hand, um, you know, with 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 no machines. And from there, from there. It went to Italy, uh, where it became popular with the aristocracy, and they called it spun sugar. And spun sugar is a lot like, you know, the, the, the posh mac. Um, the spun sugar is basically sugar that is melted and drizzled over sheets or objects to create various forms. And it was usually set out as a centerpiece type thing with fruit accompanying with it, so you could, like, have the fruit and the sugar uh, together. But that was, um, so that was very, this was very common among, among rich people, but it never really spread with the poor people. Um, and this was due to the difficulty it took to make it, um, and that can also because uh, sugar was considered a luxury during those times, so that the low, low, lower classes never, never really tried it, so it never took off as a common snack, which is why I think it, there was the lull uh, between then and almost now, like I say, cut, um, cut to 350 years later in the late 1800s when a dentist by, by the name of William Morrison and a confectioner whose name was John C. Wharton made the first cotton candy maker, but they did not call it cotton candy. They called it fairy floss, which I feel like means something totally different now. Um, there was a guy named Thomas Patton who actually debuted his machine before Morrison and Wharton at the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus um, in 1900, depending on who you ask. And we'll get into the, that here right, uh, right pretty soon. But he had actually patented the, the device after Morrison. Um, so basically one year after, I think Morrison and Wharton patented, patented their device in 1890. Or excuse me, no, a few years. Um, in 1897, I think it was. Or 1899, I'm not sure. And the patent guy, he um, actually um, he patented his device in uh, the, year, the year 1900. So while he actually debuted the machine before Morrison and Wharton, they already had uh, the patent for it. They were just working on trying to make it better. And basically, they uh, they they debuted they debuted their um their their cotton candy machine at the St. Louis World Fair in 1904, uh, selling over 68,000 boxes. But like I said, there are other articles that say that they actually debuted at the Paris Exposition in 1900. Um, so I figured I'd mention that. You can never really tell. I, honestly, I, I believe that. I don't know why anybody would make that up. You know, it's, 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 it's a four-year difference, and I don't know, a lot of stuff happened at the Paris Exposition as well. So I, it makes sense to me that that probably happened. But then there was another guy, uh, probably about 15, 20 years later, by the name of Joseph Lasco, La, Lasca, you know. He's, he's, he's from, from New Orleans, so the name's definitely got some, some, some French in there. Um, but made another, he made another, this guy, he was a dentist as well. Uh, he made another machine very similar to the first cotton candy machine. Basically, he kind of just like 
punched it up a little bit and made you know a few advancements so that it would work um, a little a little better. And he sold it mainly in his own dentist office first, and he started calling it Cotton Candy. He was the first person to actually um, you know kind of bring that name into the zeitgeist. And then basically from then forward, while they're at you know the next ten to twenty years, Cotton Candy and and Fairy Floss, as far as the names, they're battling, and then Cotton Candy kind of just wins out. And that that basically and what what they said is like. The machine is essentially the, almost the same machine um, that it was 100 and, and 150 years ago, excuse me, 125 years ago when they first made it. And it, or it's just, you know, they've just continued to punch it up with, with as to, uh, the, the techn- technological advancements continue. It's gotten easier to, to, to make, but um, the, the process is almost the same. Uh, uh, now I'll, I'll actually explain, I'll explain how cotton candy is made really, uh, really quickly, just, just for the, just for the, uh, for the lay person out there because it's if you're a scientist you probably understand this a lot better um than i'm about to explain it but sugar is poured into a machine that heats it until it becomes a liquid syrup and then the hot strands are put under a centrifugal force that catapults the liquid sugar through holes at the top of the machine right so as soon as the sugar comes into contact with the cold air outside it tries to go back to its original crystal form but it cools too fast leaving its particles in a state of flux, right? And that's pretty much what we love. We love that flux. And because something not quite liquid, not quite, excuse me, and it becomes something not quite liquid, not quite solid, a cloud-like texture, which is a great way to describe it. The process is similar to turning sand into glass, which I thought was really interesting when I heard that because I, I never thought about that. I've seen a lot of cotton candy before, and it's always interested me how we turn sand into glass, so... Basically, cotton candy and glass, not so, not so different. And that is how cotton candy happened. And now it's time for the roundup. The roundup. The roundup. And we're going to round it up. Iranians make the first version of cotton candy, dating back to at least the 1400s, calling it Pashmak. European aristocracy via Italy creates spun sugar, which is basically handmade cotton candy. In 1897, Morrison and Wharton create the first cotton candy machine, calling it Fairy Floss. Joseph Laskow updates their machine when the patent runs out, changing the name to Cotton Candy. Things I didn't know before And now I know them Never heard of these things. What are they? Okay, uh, I've only got two today for the things I didn't know before, but and people may think that these are these are pointless. But the first one um, is directly related to cotton candy. The second one is not. It's just something that I just when like I said when I'm doing these episodes, I do a lot of research, and you just come across some random facts while you're doing them that sometimes don't have anything to do with what you're looking at. Um, but the first one is, um, the flavors of the cotton candy. So I obviously assumed there were flavors. Like, I mean, like then there's way more flavors now, but like, you know, the two that we talk about, like the pink and the blue that you see at all the fairs and sporting events and stuff like that, there are actual flavors. Um, cherry is pink. I did not know that. Raspberry is the blue one. Also did not know that. That just seems, I don't know, like. Part of me honestly thought, I mean, I know I said just said that I assumed there were flavors that just they when they made them that they were just like, well, it's sugar. We'll just call them pink and blue. Like, who needs why must we go any deeper than that? And who really tastes any of those flavors? Is anybody like, oh, blue, that's my raspberry. I know I love raspberries. Give me that blue one. No, I mean, not to me. I don't think. And But I haven't had cotton candy in so long, but I don't know. But that so I, I did not know that. Okay, and the second one, like I said, has nothing to do with cotton candy, but uh, I found out that the national fruit of Jamaica is one of the deadliest fruits in the world. Basically, um, you can eat it, and they eat a very small portion of it, but the other parts of it are can kill people. They kill people and can cause you to throw up and all this stuff. And I just, I just thought that was really wild. It's called, it's called the ackee, the ackee fruit, and evidently it came, it originally came over to Jamaica on a slave ship. Um, back when they were doing the, uh, the the slave trade, but yeah, so that's that's one more thing that I did not know. All right, um, and that, that's been another episode of How Did That Happen. We talked about cotton candy, 
I was honestly not sure if I was going to do this episode, not like this, but like episode 22, but do this topic as an episode just because I don't know. I didn't know if people would find cotton candy that interesting, but after having done it, I don't know. While there's not as much information, I guess, as, as there were with other stuff, like with the nights or with even like bottled water, still a pretty cool episode. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, I'll be posting, like I said, pictures of some of this stuff, like the, the posh back and the, the sponge sugar on the Twitter page. And every week we are inching closer and closer to actually having a website. So when that does happen, I'll let you guys know. And that'll probably be where all of the HDTH stuff is at, plus a whole bunch of other stuff that I do. Um, but yeah, so that's coming soon. And I'll see you guys uh, next week.